Hey guy from the past and welcome back to the worst channel on YouTube. I'm Matt and I recently discovered time travel and I decided to come to you since I know you're a huge Star Wars fan and I figured you'd want to know how things go for the next movie. True, The Force Awakens was a little bit of a mess, but it was generally passable. So after this, Disney decided that they would need to try and create something a little better and more original, and they thought that creating a prequel story would be the best way to do that. So they decided to create a movie called Rogue One, which is the story of the team who stole the Death Star plans before A New Hope. They're a team of rebels who go on an adventure, but in reality, they're really just a team of random people who have nothing in common, no real reason to be together, and the most boring lead character that has ever been written in the history of cinema. Well, I guess that's not this main character, but she comes kind of close. Her name is like Jin or Jen or something. Honestly, people mumble her name, so it could be either. She may even be related to Qui-Gon Jin now that I think about it, but who knows. But yeah, she's the daughter of the dude who designed the Death Star, apparently. And when she's a kid, her father gets kidnapped, and he's forced to design it, and then she is raised by the rebels. We don't really see that, because character development is really not a priority for this movie, as we'll find out as we go. She says she's a rebel, and doesn't follow any of the rules, but we never see any of that. Instead, she just talks about how rebellions are about hope over and over and over and over and over and over. Pretty much all of her lines are about hope, essentially. That's kind of the only thing they had for her to do. The other characters are just about as well-developed as well. We have some dude named Cassian, who is probably the most interesting one, because he's of questionable moral character, at least at the beginning of the movie. I mean, they sort of try to make him morally gray because, like, he kills someone and tries to assassinate Jen's father, but in general, he's a good guy that we're told is morally gray, so that's the most character development they give to him. Then there's this reprogrammed Imperial droid that tags along with them and says sassy things, and some non-Jedi Force monk, which is a cool idea in concept. He can kind of use the Force, but he isn't a Jedi or Sith. I mean, honestly, there's some interesting ideas brought forth in this movie for characters, but they're all executed in a super boring way. In fact, the other characters are so forgettable that I couldn't even tell you their names. There's like a pilot and the friend of the monk guy and probably others that I don't even remember, but whatever. So the main villain of the movie is named Krennic, and he's an Imperial officer in charge of the Death Star. Now, in the original Star Wars, it was Tarkin who was in charge of the Death Star, but as the actor who portrayed him passed away, they recast this as a different character, which, you know, that would have been fine, but then it's like they chickened out at the last second and put Tarkin in the movie as well because they were afraid people wouldn't watch it without the nostalgia factor. They couldn't stick with the decision to have a different officer, and so Krennic and Tarkin are both in charge of the new weapon, sort of sharing duties, but Tarkin is a completely CGI puppet of the original actor, and trust me, it's not nightmarishly creepy or off-putting at all. So, the story. The, the woman, what is her name? Jin, right. Uh, she grows up, and we don't see it at all. Instead, she's captured and held in some Imperial labor camp. This Cassian guy breaks her out because he knows that her father is involved in the Death Star stuff somehow. Um, anyway, he brings her to Mon Mothma, you remember her, who then learns of the new weapon, and they go on a side quest to rescue her father from the Empire, but... In the meantime, Cassian is given secret orders to assassinate him instead of rescue him, which is also supposed to make him morally gray, even though it's just an order given by somebody else, but moving on. Then, for no real reason or explanation, the rebel guy who raised Jin, that we never really saw before now, captures some Imperial pilot or something and subjects him to torture via an anime tentacle monster. Kind of comes out of nowhere. Then Jin and Cassian suddenly appear there without much buildup or explanation either. They learn, I think, from the Imperial guy that there's a hologram or something of Jin's dad that he left for her to see, but for whatever reason, Jin never saw it before now. I know it sounds like it makes no sense, but trust me, when you see it... Well, I guess when you see it, it also makes no sense, but it's at least a little clearer. 
Okay, so anyway, this hologram of her dad tells her that he built a weakness into the Death Star on purpose that could be exploited, and this explains how there was that exhaust port that could destroy the entire thing from the original movie. I guess this was a plot hole people complained about, so it feels like this entire movie was kind of a painstaking effort to cover up and fix this plot hole retroactively. Okay, so they then discover that there is a weakness in the Death Star, and her father could have explained what this weakness was in the hologram, but if he did, we wouldn't have a movie, so instead he's all cryptic about it. This way, they have to go and travel to yet another planet, and this seems to be the other main purpose of the movie besides fixing that one plot hole, is to show off different planets and locations. They do so much planet hopping that it's impossible to keep track of where they are or what they're doing. It's just... Anyway, I'm getting off track. Okay, so after they see this hologram, the Death Star just happens to be there at that same planet, and as a test of the weapon's power, they fire a low-energy shot at the planet, which destroys the entire city and kills the rebel guy who raised Jin. So his character was entirely pointless, and he had like two minutes of screen time. He's in there to deliver a hologram and talk weird, and that's about it. Yeah, he has a weird voice I forgot to mention, but really, that's about it. I guess he was in the cartoons or something, but whatever. All of our main characters escape via plot armor and go flying off to try and get the schematics for the Death Star to find out what the weakness really is, and that's the main purpose of the movie. So this is where it gets confusing. So Jin and her party fly to an Imperial base looking for the schematics and try to rescue her father, I guess. And Cassian decides not to kill her dad when he has the chance, which is supposed to be a character arc, I think. I don't know. Anyway, her father dies anyway. I can't really remember how because he was really boring. Then Darth Vader then shows up for fan service. Uh, he comes in and complains that the Death Star isn't complete and then leaves. Really, there's no purpose to it other than to be like, hey, Darth Vader is here. It's out of place, cringeworthy, and totally unnecessary, but it's there. Jin then goes back to the Rebels and is like, let's continue to try and steal the schematics, but because this is the second act low point, as shown on the standard action story chart graph, the Rebels are like, no, let's give up. We failed once, and so we're never, ever gonna try it again. So, Jin gathers her small, ragtag party to go off by themselves in a rebel ship that they name Rogue One because, you know, it's the title of the movie, and then go to yet another planet to try and get the schematics. So, this is our third act, where they have lots of action, blowing up stormtroopers, sneaking into the base, etc. The quipping droid sacrifices himself to save the party, and because he had probably the most character development up to this point, it's actually almost approaching an emotional moment, but it also kind of fails. But, of course, the team gets the schematics, which are kept in a James Bond-style death trap device, because, as we all know, this is how data is stored in all reputable facilities. Jin climbs through this dangerous death trap and pulls out the physical cartridge with the schematics, because nothing's digital in this world, and then has to upload them to the Rebels. But the signal on her space cell phone or something is low, so she has to find a manual satellite to upload it. This is the last action scene of the movie, where Jin is trying to realign a satellite dish and every one of her teammates on the ground is dying by the hands of the Empire. It's supposed to be a sad moment, but because none of the characters were really ever developed, it's really hard to care, and it ends up being really boring and slow. So, of course, she uploads the plans to the Rebels. They then deliver them to a freaky and not at all terrifying CGI puppet of a young Carrie Fisher as Leia, and then comes the obviously tacked-on, reshot scene of Darth Vader boarding the Rebel ship and slaughtering a whole bunch of Rebels in a quote-unquote cool scene of him flipping around with a lightsaber and stuff. It really comes out of nowhere and is such obvious pandering fan service that it's almost sickening, but it's the most interesting and least boring part of the movie. Anyway, all in all, it was pretty, I guess, marketable? So, yeah, it was good for marketing, just not so great for watching. But some people liked it, so Disney decided to keep going on the prequels, and of course, it was amazingly successful. So, thanks for listening to me, and I plan on explaining the other movies later, but for now, if you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and leave a like. I... wait, I mean... yeah, actually, you're someone from the past, 
not someone watching a YouTube video. Why did I put that in the script? Okay. So anyway, um, if you like, then uh, I don't, I don't know, tell me or something. Like, yeah, I guess that should work because we're just talking. So you broke the immersion. Okay. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Thanks.